In this video I will talk about flashes for macro photography. Why you should use them, which ones I recommend you to buy and which ones I recommend you to never buy. And also what settings that I use for insect macro photography on my flash. And also some common pitfalls when using a flash for macro photography. So let's get into it. So first of all, why should you use a flash in macro photography? Well, reason is that in macro photography, things tend to get very dark. First of all, when you focus very closely at like one time or two time magnification, it naturally gets dark because of the magnification. And therefore you need lots of light and natural light is often not enough to take good macro photos. Especially considering the other factor at play here, which is that the closer you focus, the smaller the aperture you need to get a good depth of field. You might have noticed this if you have done macro photography that if you don't shoot at like f11 or even smaller apertures, you will get a very very thin depth of field and often even small apertures is not enough to give you the depth of field you want in macro photography. So those two factors uh, make it very hard to do macro photography in natural light. It is still possible to do it in natural light, but it's very hard and you will get a very, very short depth of field. So especially if you are a beginner, I can warmly recommend you to get a flash. On to the next point. What kinds of flashes do I not recommend? I do not recommend you to buy ring flashes or these kinds of flashes where the flash head is very close to the front of the lens. These are marketed as flashes made especially for macro photography. But if you are a beginner, I really recommend you to not use these because they are very hard to diffuse in a good way and you will not get as beautiful photos with these as you would get with a regular flash. And on top of that, these ring flashes, they usually cost a lot more money than a regular flash. So there really is no point at all in getting them. I recommend you to just get a regular on camera flash for macro photography together with a diffuser. And I will not talk too much about diffusers in this video, just know that you need to get one to get beautiful photos. And search my name and diffuser on YouTube and you will find lots of videos where I talk about good diffusers. So if you already have an on camera flash and you are a beginner in macro photography, that flash that you have is probably good enough to get started and probably good enough to get you very very far. So if you already have a flash, you don't really need to buy one. I do however recommend that you have an external flash for macro photography. It might be possible to do it with these built in flashes that a lot of cameras have. But I find that in general the built in flashes are usually a bit too weak to do macro photography in a good way. So it's good to have some kind of external flash that you put on top of your camera. So which flash do I recommend you to buy if you don't have one? Well, I've tried lots of different flashes for macro photography and I always try to find flashes that are good value for money, that are strong, that can do very fast focus stacking because when you get more advanced in macro photography, you will want to focus stack. You will want to take several photos per second and then the flash must be able to keep up with that. And uh, not all flashes can do that. But I have a couple of recommendations for you to buy. They are in two different budgets. First, the more expensive option. This one is around $160, at least here in Europe. And this is the Godox V350. This is my favorite macro photography flash in the world. If you have $160 to spend, and you want a compact yet very powerful and fast flash for macro photography, this I think is the one you should get. Really good value for money and uh, it's really fast, really consistent between the exposures and you can easily take many shots per second at a pretty strong uh, strength with this flash. Uh, so I really love this one. It has a custom lithium battery that you need a special charger for that you get with the flash when you buy it. And this battery is really good and enables a really long photography session. I very seldom have to switch batteries on this one. I've taken as many as 
1,600 photos in one session and still the battery held up great and I did not need to switch it. So yeah, I, I cannot recommend this flash warmly enough. If you are on a bit of a tighter budget and you don't want to spend $160 on a flash, uh, you want to spend maybe $50 or $60, then I have a recommendation for you as well. This is the Mikey MK320. This is the flash that I have used for many years and I've been very happy with this flash. It costs around $60. You can search for it on eBay or Amazon and you will find it at that price. It comes for pretty much all cameras that you can imagine. And this one, just like the Godox V350, is very small, compact. Uh, however, it uses AA batteries, so you have to get batteries for it. My recommendation for the best batteries you can get for a flash is these ones. Um, these are the GP photo flash batteries. I know that they are not sold in every country in the world, just in some regions. If you cannot find these where you live, uh, a lot of people recommend the Panasonic Eneloop Pro batteries. I haven't tried these myself, but those are also supposed to be really good uh, for flashes. Mikey MK320 is really good. Uh, the drawback with this flash is that when you do fast focus stacking, it is not as consistent between the exposures as the Godox V350. But this one works very, very well for the price, $60. This one is a great option if you don't do a lot of focus stacking, if you just want a compact, really good flash for macro photography that doesn't cost a lot of money then this is, I think, the best budget option that you can get. Note though, however, that with both these flashes, the Mikey MK320 and the Godox V350, I have noticed that the quality control is not always great. A lot of people tell me that they had problems with their Mikey MK320. Especially it seems like there is some compatibility issues uh, with the Mikey MK320 on Fujifilm cameras. So if you have a Fujifilm camera, I would not recommend you to buy the Mikey MK320 because there seems to be some kind of firmware issue or something. I've noticed this myself as well. But on all my Sony cameras and on other brands of cameras, this flash has worked great for me. And the V350, same story there. The first time I bought this flash, it actually did not impress me at all. It had lots of issues. And then a lot of people told me that they were so happy with this flash, so I actually bought another one. And that time I got a good copy of the flash and this one I'm really happy with. So be aware that these flashes are not perfect when it comes to quality control. So you might be unlucky enough to get a bad unit. Uh, but know that there are good units of these flashes out there and it's worth trying to get one of those. So what about flash settings and camera settings for the flash? Well, when it comes to camera settings, I usually never adjust anything related to the flash. I just set my camera in manual mode. I set a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second, 1 250th of a second, somewhere around there. And I also set the aperture at something small, like um, f8 or f11. It's usually a good option if you shoot insects. And then I set the ISO of the camera as low as possible, between ISO 100 or 200. When I have these settings in place on the camera, note that I do not change anything related to the shutter or the flash or anything. I just use the default settings there and it usually works great. Uh, then I set the flash and what I personally prefer when it comes to the flash is that I set it in manual mode as you can see here, the M in the corner, all flashes have this. And then I set the strength of the flash to 1 over 16. Usually this is a great starting point together with the camera settings I just told you to use. But if you find that the exposure is too bright, simply lower the strength of the flash to 132. And if the image is too dark, simply increase the strength of the flash to 1 over 8 or something like that. And that is how I go about the settings. It's not any more complicated than that. It's really simple actually. 
I know that some people use the TTL mode, uh, where the flash will like automatically try to adjust itself. Uh, I personally prefer not to use that because when I have all the manual settings on the, both the camera and the flash, I know that I will get very consistent exposures. And actually during a photo walk, it is very uncommon that I need to change the flash or any other setting that often. Maybe if I'm in the shadows and I walk out into the sun, I need to dis decrease the strength of the flash. But other than that, I usually can just leave the flash at the setting I have in the beginning of the photo walk and it will work great. I don't need to adjust it that much. Some flashes have a zoom setting where you can set like a focal length. And uh, if you set a wide focal length, meaning like uh, 12 millimeter or 15 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 24 millimeter, something like that. That means that the flash will try to go wider with the light. And if you use a longer focal length there, like 100 millimeter or 150 or 85 or something like that, that means that the, the beam will be a bit uh, thinner, a bit more narrow. What I recommend here is to set it as wide as possible, because when you have the flash on top of your, your camera, you usually have a diffuser here somewhere, and you want the flash to cover as much of the diffuser as possible, uh, because then you get the softest, nicest colors in your picture and the picture will look the best. So just set it at a low focal length, a wide one. One more camera setting that is good to set is the white balance. Try to set it manually at 5500 Kelvin or 5600 Kelvin because most flashes have a light that is at that temperature. So if you use a flash for macro photography and set the white balance manually to 5500 5, Kelvin, you will get very nice colors in your photos without having to adjust the white balance in Lightroom afterwards. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video and do subscribe if you like macro photography. See you soon again.